Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's off meta build, we'll be pulling off our dream of becoming a Destiny 2 basketball player via Strand and Void combo. Now, utilizing Runa's Effigy's Void Effect and Strand's Tangle, I came up with a weird idea of utilizing the ability to throw balls at a target in a sort of basketball themed build. This is not to be taken too seriously, as it's not something worth using in most end game content. But the survivability it provides with the two in hand does allow you to try this out in Legend to Master content. Very simple, very stupid, but very fun for those that enjoy the finer things in life. To start, you're going to want to add the Wanderer, where tangles that you throw attach to targets and detonate into a suspending burst. A threatening final blow is also great tangles. You'll then want Mind Spun Invocation to enhance your grenades. Using the new aspect along with the exotic, I plan to make it so that each time we create a void orb from ruinous effect and get a kill with it, we'll create a tangle from said enemy defeat. From here we can then launch it at a target and net a kill or suspend depending on what is happening. If we net a suspend, then we can repeat the process again, but make it more easier with a way of netting kills in one go, etc. We'll also be using grapple grenades enhanced, as this will allow users to create their friendlings on hit, which will also trigger the wanderer's secondary effect. In simple terms, this is how you get your balls back one after another. No puns intended. Looking into the fragment, Thread of Warding, where picking up all power grants you woven mail. Thread of Continuity, where Suspend and Rather on Sever effects duration are increased. Thread of Generation, where Dean damage generates grenade energy. And Thread of Transmutation, where while you have woven mail, weapon final blows create tangle. Both Thread of Warding and Transmutation are the go-to combo that everyone should always have on, as these two alone will allow you to have an easier access to Woven Melt Defense and Tangle options. With just these two, it will allow our current fiend to play out more consistently without the need of additional strand weapons to make it work. Also, this plays very well into the survivability of the build in hand, as Woven Melt, Runa's Effigy Guard Effect, and our resilient stat will all be stacking together, making it easier to close the gap and detonate our attack. You can also add on the Federal Evolution in the mix as well, because of how often we plan to use our grenades. However, this is optional, as Fredlings won't be the main focus of the build at all. For the mods and stat section, we have resilience, recovery, and strength being the main big three to focus on, with very similar stats to each other. The Discipline, however, has the highest out of the frame and will allow us to use our grenades a lot more often. At tier 10 Discipline, we'll be offering the most to players and allowing us to repeatedly use our grapple grenades to either close a gap or pull off a really great slam dunk. Now originally the stat is at tier 7 and is being boosted further by tier 10 via the Font of Focus mod. Just as one mod is all that a player will need if you want to succeed in getting the max cooldown rate for your current grenade of choice. However, we do also have the Feather Generation and Nezrex Sin at play that will also give us an additional ability energy. Nezrex may seem like a weird choice for many people, but actually it offers us a faster ability regen as long as you use any Void weapon. You don't need to use your Void subclass for the best regen effect, which overall allows players to become more creative in the mean run. Recovery and Resilience is both at tier 7 as we'll be making use of the healing rifts every now and then when things do get bad. This will also work alongside with the powerful attraction mod which will allow us to gather orbs of power within our radius. We then also have the reaper mod that will help with getting us charged with power much easier when using a rift and then getting a kill afterwards. Then lastly we have our strength at tier 7 as we've had enough slot left over to invest in whatever we like. Nothing wholly special for the stat but arcane needle is great for taking out this smaller enemies quickly with how hard they hit. But the main reason for them is that they can inflict unravel onto our target for an additional damage over time. This is great against bosses or ultra threats, as these with further continuity allows them to apply additional damage for quite a long time. For armor charges, charged up and stacks on stacks is going to be giving you a plus one to charge stacks and make sure each armor power collected will count as two collected instead of one. This is going to help with support on our void weapon surge mods for our special weapon being used. And then the time dilation mod will increase the duration by 5 seconds extra. We also have the Void Cypher mod to help with creating all the power via our chosen weapon. And then the Firepower mod will help greatly with using our grenades so frequently. You may want to add on the Hands On, especially Ammo Final mod to further help the build, but this is additional and up to you. For weapons, we have the Runa's Effigy as the main primary weapon we'll be using to master the following build. 
As this season has trade 5 war as one of the many weapons you used against certain champions, now is honestly the perfect time to use and abuse the setup before these champ mods go. Although not super powerful on its own, the weapon is designed for the user to make full use of the void orb created, so you can get the maximum effectiveness out of whatever build you have in mind. Upon turning an enemy into a void orb, you can do a light attack, guard, which can both block incoming damage and blind targets, and then use a heavy attack that can clear the areas and heal if you have the catalyst. All of these here, paired with strand, allows us to play aggressive in the most densely saturated areas, with no fear of needing to have perk that can heal and provide extra damage reduction while in action. Sadly, its effects are only limited to minor and ultras you face, as bosses require something a bit more harder hitting to help against the more bigger threats. This has got to be one of the most unusual builds for me to create, even for off meta standing. However, the ability to toy around with ideas like this makes playing a game a whole lot more fun when you know what you're capable of. Such a build is useful mainly for content that has a lot of enemies nearby, such as battleground, strikes and seasonal activities, but at the same time it can see action and legendary content with how it interacts with strand with a male effect and effigy's guard ability plus healing. I've always joked that creating a basketball based build in Destiny using Ruinous as a basis is something that would be too dumb to do, but enjoyable when doing small tasks here and there. Now I wasn't able to do it back then fully, but now that Strand exists, you can do something very similar to it and quite effectively, I must say. Using Effigy to create a void spear for us to use, we can close the gap, unblock, drain or melee hit with a spear in hand. And from here we can do a heavy attack to wipe out enemies nearby us. Now if done correctly, we should also be able to create a tangle create out the following via the threat of warding transmutation. And from using the tangle, we also have the new wanderer aspect that sticks to a target, suspend, and also create a threadling all in one. In simple terms, you're going to be dunking as many balls given to you onto a target and winning many, many awards doing so. Joke aside, the build does provide benefits with it being stupid at times, with the prime example of you getting your abilities back fast with the help of Nezrak's Sim Helm on Zotic, quick and easy to access health regen, 60% damage reduction, extra damage protection via the weapon given, and very flexible mods usage without the need of anything seasonal. Is this to be taken serious for endgame content? No, but considering that this season allows trace rivals to excel well, and damage protection provided allows us to play aggressive for mass rewards, the opportunity to use in the build in such an environment is not out of the question. If you enjoy off meta builds that delve deeply into unique territories, then this may be something worth investing in when you get the time to do so. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these in the future then leave a like and a sub bar here. I will leave a dim link for the build below, and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.